What is going on, everybody? It's the France, and we are back for our NXT review for Wednesday, March 21st, 2018. We have just got done seeing a great match, a great main event in NXT between Adam Cole and Cassius Ono. We had the final first round in the Dusty Road Tag Team Classic as well, which had a change to it because of Tyler Bates' injury. Pete Dunne and Roderick Strong took their place against, of course, the aforementioned, the aforementioned at the beginning of the um, tournament, Orny Lorcan and Danny Birch. But the show started off with another Champa classic. This was just great. He comes out to start this show. I thought this was going to be the night that we got the uh, announcement for the new title, but that is going to be next week. Um, William Regal came on before the main event and said that he has an announcement next week that's going to change the landscape of NXT forever and the announcement that we know what it is is going to do exactly that and i cannot wait to see what the crowd reaction is going to be for that announcement as well as just see if they have any idea what the title is going to look like or anything or we're gonna to have to wait till full sale i mean i mean um oh, new orleans they were back in full sale of course chopper comes out he takes a long cold walk to the ring he grabs the mic and more we want johnny chance we did get a couple, we did get We Want Johnny Psycho Killer, We Want Johnny Psycho Killer, absolutely just beautiful. He finally, after about two, three times trying to talk, gets on the mic and says he's gone, gone! Newsflash, he's not walking down that aisle, he's gone, and crowd with you suck chance. So he did finally talk, but doesn't say much, which he doesn't need to, he really doesn't. If anybody's like, well, he needs to have a big, huge explanation why he's doing all this. No, that would just ruin the entire um, thing of this. Chomper sucks chance. This is a fantastic thing. He does. He just puts his arms out, poses for a minute, drops the mic in the ring. Exits the ring pissed as hell that everything's going. Like how the crowd just criticizes him and yells at him and boos him and everything. He's circling around the ring, grabs some signs and rips them up. He gets to, he wipes his butt with one of them, which I thought was funny. Then he grabs this huge Gargano emoji sign and from this, looked like it was a teenager or something, girl, I could be totally wrong, and just rips that sign in front of her. What a dick move, but fantastic. And continues to taunt the crowd and goes after a couple other ones. Then he goes to the other, because how it is is that you have like section, empty space, section of fans, empty space, section of fans. He gets to the corner where it would be the empty section and he gets, grabs a big sign, one of the big Gargano signs from a masked, an individual. The individual takes the mask off and it's Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano then punches Masa Ciampa and gets, jumps over the barricade and starts wailing on him. They get in the ring, and Johnny Gargano and him start, he starts wailing on him a little bit before three security men come in, and the crowd definitely wants this fight to happen. If you cannot tell by the night, by the night I don't know what to tell you, but you hear a massive let them fight, let them fight, let them fight, let them fight, until they were able to drag Johnny Gargano out of the arena and they went all the way back to like the parking lot area with Johnny Gargano being dragged while Chomp while Chomp is in the ring pretty much going ballistic like he doesn't work here anymore what is he doing here get him out of here just absolutely fantastic I loved it just loved it I don't know if this is gonna happen in New Orleans there was I guess a rumor that there was a tweet and delete or a message and delete on Facebook or Instagram that this match was gonna happen in sanction that has not been confirmed yet we still have two weeks to go until NXT take over New Orleans so if they're going to make this match it has to come next week or the go home show and I don't know if it's gonna happen then they had Charlie Caruso highlights what's happened so far in the Dusty Tag Team Classic, even though the first round hasn't been over yet, which if you're going to highlight the first round, I would at least wait till the first round is over. They did talk about Mustache Mountain being out, an undisputed error, on because Roderick Strong took the social media asking to be in this match, in, in this um, tournament, which if you remember in the last Dusty Road Tag Team Classic, Roderick Strong was a part of the Dusty Tag Team Classic with Austin Aries. Austin Aries was, of course, the man who introduced NXT to Roderick Strong, but unfortunately, due to a knee to the face by Shinsuke Nakamura, Austin Aries broke his orbital bone, and the Tusty Rome Tag Team Classic 
journey for Team Aries, as it was called, because that's what Austin Aries likes to do. He's the greatest man that ever lived, and he likes to have everything be about him. They had to make it a singles match between them, between Roderick Strong, and I believe one of, I think they faced TM61. I think it was TM61 who they faced. But they had that match, and Roderick Strong, of course, took the pinfall so they could eliminate Team Aries out of the match without even having to have Austin Aries do anything. So that was his last experience with the Dusty Rogues Tag Team Classic. Would that change? Would he have a better experience this time? We will have to wait and find out. Undisputed um, on Strong being added to the Tag Team Classics say he's not a tag team guy and a loser. They say it doesn't matter who wins because you're going to get beat by the baddest team on the planet. Cole suggests Fish and O'Reilly stay in the back for his match tonight, which, of course, if anybody does know, these were taped after the injury to Bobby Fish. So they have probably had something holding Bobby Fish up because this, is, of course, was probably pre-taped before he went out to get his surgery done or after i'm not sure but yes they pretty much played it up that i'll just stay in the back because they're just trying to hold off the fact that bobby fish is of course injured and they're going to be out for at least six to eight months and we will probably get that ruling next week or the on the go home show i do not know we have to wait and see but you know any looking but danny but you know any looking versus Roderick Strong and Pete Dunn. Dunn, I guess, looking for more gold to add to his name. I mean, why not? Just if you can do it, just get every gold piece that you can. Who's the weight champ at the very start of this? Strong and Lord can start this match. Strong with a submission early on in the match. Lorcan gets out and wrestles him to his corner and tags Birch in. Wrist locked by Strong, who brings Birch over and gets Dunn tagged in. Dunn in control of Birch. Leapfrog turned into a drop toe hold by Birch, which is a beautiful looking thing. All four men end up in the ring as they go to a break. Back in back from break, and Dunn is in control of Birch with his joint manipulation, which just looks almost um honestly brutal half the time. Like how anyone would actually let him do a joint manipulation to them just uh, looks awful. Then he has a modified looking regal stretch, gets a two count. Then he shoves Birch into the corner, in which Strong tags. Which well, he tags in Strong, not immediately. Strong had his hand up there for at least five, ten, fifteen seconds before Dunn finally puts his hands out and he tags in and gets a pendulum, pendulum black backbreaker. He ends up tagging back, back in Dunn, who they hit a double suplex and then both do a running knife head chop to the front and back of him at the same time. Nice. Ugh, that, that just sounded awful. Birch gets back into it and tags in. Birch gets back in and they both tag their partners and Lorcan goes crazy and strong getting a pinfall for a two count. Running blockbuster for a two count, which I've never seen anyone do a running blockbuster before, so that was a nice little move. Birch gets tagged in again and they shove in but tags in and gets shoved into Lorkin. Lorkin sent outside. Strong goes for a dive to the outside, but misses and gets hit with a uppercut. I was like, okay, so this is going to be the beginning of the end. Usually when you have a someone go outside towards the tail end of the match and get miss a move and get hit, then that's the end of that team, and they're going to end up losing, but that's not what happened. Bunch and Dunn slapping the taste out of each other's mouths. Uh, definitely some strong shots. Of course, Danny Burch and Pete Dunne come from the British Strong style, so when these two mix it up in the ring, I would love to see Danny Burch and Pete Dunne for the UK title one-on-one -on -one because I could just see that being a slob. Um, I'm going to take it from JR. That one would probably be a slobber knock because those two would just be slapping the taste and beating the hell out of each other, so that would be a hell of a UK title match down the line. Both Burch and Lorcan Lord, Lord, Lord suplex, suplex Strong and Dunne onto each other, which... It was back suplex one, back suplex two, and like they just that was pretty awesome. For only a two count, then Birch and Lorcan get done and strong into a submissions. One had the Crippler crossface, the other one had a Boston Crab, and Strong well, Strong sends Lorcan into Birch off of that, stopping both submissions. The match ends when Strong gets tagged in and hits a pendulum black backbreaker, then hits the end of heartache for the pin in the winners and moving on. Are Pete Dunn and Roderick Strong, the mixed up tag team, win the match. How do I feel about mixed like throwing on, throw together tag teams going uh, advancing in a tag team tournament? I honestly don't like it. I mean, if you think back to the original Dusty Road Tag Team Classic, where you had the finals be Rhino and Baron Corbin versus Samoa Joe and 
um, Finn Balor over teams like the Revival, which I don't think they would call the Revival yet, and American Alpha and teams like that. Just if you're going to do a legit tag team classic, I know it was supposed to be Mustache Mountain, and I don't know who would have won that match had it not had it been Mustache Mountain, but. I'd rather see teams that have actually legit tag teams win a tag team tournament than actually this. So we have Sanity versus this team next week. So I'm going for Sanity, which I would like to see Sanity versus, um, I would like to see Sanity versus the Street Profits so we could have, and then of course the Street Profits go over to go into NXT New Orleans, but we will have to wait and see. Promo for Ricochet coming soon. Now, of course, we all do know that the last set of tapings at Center Stage, there was a match tape for Ricochet that did not air on the WWE Network's NXT. But quite honestly, I like this better because Ricochet deserves and is a big enough name to have promos for his debut. Of course, it's not going to happen next week. I'm pretty sure it's going to happen on the Go Home Show to WrestleMania weekend. So we're going to have pretty much two days before TakeOver, or three days, yeah, two days, three days before TakeOver, we're going to have Ricochet make his NXT TV debut. And I'm looking forward to that. So we'll probably have a promo next week too. Same thing, it'll just say Ricochet next week. And that'll just be really awesome. Amber Moon versus Aaliyah. They slap hands for, you know, that show of respect. You know, some people shake, some just do a little hand tap and they lock up. Good back and forth to start in the corner. Leah grabs Amber Moon, goes to like kick Leah who's running towards her. Leah catches that and pulls and swings it to the side and just grabs her hair and she pulls her down. At that moment, Shayna Baszler shows up on the stage and goes over to the, um, to the announce table, the commentator's desk. And decides to take over commentary for this entire match. Aaliyah in control of the match at this time. Moon rules up Aaliyah for a two, then a running flatliner, which was pretty interesting. Diamond cross body caught, turned into a Samoan drop. Cartwheel splash in the corner for the eclipse for the three count, and Ember Moon is your winner. Post match, Ember Moon gets on the turnbuckle facing towards the um, commentator's desk, and Shayna Baszler gets on the commentator's desk, and these two just trash talk back and forth and stare down. Looking forward to this match. I'm surprised they didn't do a contract signing for this one, but of course they did do the contract signing for the World Heavy, the um, NXT Heavyweight Championship, so that is what it is. So they did announce that the semifinals, both semifinal matches will be next week. We will have the AOP versus the Street Profits and Sanity versus Strong and Done. Which you could call them, um, you could call them, I don't know, like if you could, if you gave Pete Dunn and Roderick Strong a tag team name, what would it be? I honestly don't know, I can't think of a, it'd be some kind of Strong Style type name. But those are next week. Real Mendoza looks like he's out for action, but that ain't gonna happen because out comes Andrade Cien Almas and just grabs him and tosses him off to the sun like a piece of garbage, so... If that doesn't set up a match next week for those two between Ramu Mendoza and Almas, I would be surprised, but it is. He grabs the mic and says, you think you're smart, Alistair? And then starts speaking a ton of Spanish that I have no idea. He says, he, you will, you will, he will, like, you will respect me and calls him a piece of, calls him out and then calls him a piece of shit. Wants Black to face him next week and that's it. I honestly don't know why you give Andrade C and Almas the mic. He has the wrestling ability for WWE. He does not have the mic skills. You have Selena Vega, who has... She can wrestle. She can wrestle. But she's a manager right now. She is his manager. Have her do the talking. That's what managers are actually supposed to do. Female managers, for sure, are not just supposed to sit there and look good. Majority of the time, they're actually supposed to do the talking. Let Selena Vega do the talking so we at least know what the point is across. She can like talk, like whisper into her ear what he wants to get um wants across to come across so we know what the heck is supposed to be said. But she has fluent English, he does not. That is the weakness of his character. Let her do the talking. Having her be his mouthpiece is not a bad thing. So just let her do the talking so we at least know what's all need to be said. 
hype promo for Lois Sullivan, who will make his return next week as well. And Alistair Black will be in Full Sail Arena next week for NXT. So that's all next week. And including Regal does come up and says he will be making an announcement next week that we have all been waiting for. So I am looking forward to that one. Just to see what if they have the title, what the actual, how he's going to announce this thing. Is he going to come out? Is he going to do some kind of historical like reference to the North American Championship? Because the only promotion in the United States, the only thing in the United States that I know has a North American Championship is the NWA, which is still a thing, technically. We will have to wait and see, and we'll go more into that next week than this week. Adam Cole versus Cassius Ono. Dueling chance for these men to start. They lock up and Ono takes control early. Cole gets a shot to the gut on Ono and more shots to his gut. Running shoulder tackle to Ono. Ono and Cole leapfrog, you know, drop down, leapfrog, drop down, leapfrog, stuff like that. They do that for about a second or two. Adam Cole goes for another one and uh Cassius Ono is like nope and just boots him in the and his boots the hell out of him not taking him down and Ono with a running senton as well that running senton by like Cassius Ono he just seems to do that with purpose it is just a thing of beauty Ono sends Cole over the ropes and Cole appears to have tweaked his knee wink wink but it's only a ruse no 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 he doesn't actually tweak his knee but he didn't he did fool the ref, he fooled, they announced the commentators, but he didn't fool me and he didn't fool anybody else. He fooled Ono too. He goes, Ono goes to grab him and he just jumps and kick, jumps up and kicks him. Cole hurry up, hurry up, hurries and gets up into the ring and just starts wailing the hell out of Cassius Ono. He gets up eventually, um, up after a few seconds of wailing on him and then just like says, ha, look, my knee's just fine. Back from a break they went to and Cole was all over Ono's el and elbow and then bicycle kick for a Q count. Swinging neck break on Ono for also for another two. Stomp to Ono, then a chin lock on Ono, wearing him down into a back and then eventually gets him into a backstabber. Cole taunts Ono and he goes to do his My name is Adam and before he could say Cole baby, the crowd sings and sings and is like says it then he just sits there and wears like Shakes his head is like, no, 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 I'm supposed to say that, not you. Stiff shots but to Cole, knocking the wind out of him. He just he just wound up and just nailed him with that right hand. It was a beautiful shot. Ono not having the energy to, kit, to pin Cole at the time. Cole was actually the first to get up. He gets a high knee, then the axe bomber. Scoot slammed and running senton on Cole for a two for another two count. Shot another shot to Cole's face. Ono rolls over the top rope, kick to Cole's face, and a cyclone, a cyclone kick for only a two count. Suplex attempt by Ono blocked, on, so Ono just forearm smashes Cole, who backs up and just lays in a forearm shot. He's he blocks it. He hits him with a forearm shot. And Cole's down for a minute. He's like, "Is that all you got?" And just starts wailing him with forearm shots. He's just going mercifully with these forearm shots to Ono. Then Ono nails a bicycle kick to Cole, who hits a suplex shoulder um, neck breaker, as they call it. Which he hit him, I believe, with that three times, at, like two more times after this one. Cole goes for a shining wizard, blocked by Ono, hits a followaway power bomb into a high high tension elbow. A followaway power bomb onto the top rope, mind you. Then he hits the high tension elbow, sending Cole to the outside. Ono throws Cole back into the ring, goes for the pin. Cole reverses that for a two, then a few super kicks, then a super suplex into the net break again. Then a last shot knee to the back of the head for the three count, and Adam Cole is your winner. With no outside interference, Adam Cole wins this match clean as a whistle in a very good TV match for NXT. Give these guys a lot more time, and I'm sure they can throw off an NXT TakeOver Classic if they were allowed to, or if they, if they need me at a TakeOver show, but this was a good match. Not much, not much in the sake of story development for NXT TakeOver. I mean, the woman did have the stare down and almost call, called out Alistair Black and called him a piece of shit, which they did bleep the shit, of course. Which made it even more shocking they actually let him do that. Um, next week's going to be interesting because I'm sure we'll see a lot of build other than the tag team division, the tag team classic, which looks like the finals is going to be on the Go Home show. No idiots, anybody who thinks that the finals is going to be an NXT TakeOver New Orleans, it's not going to ha happen. 
that's obvious because it's going to be the finals at New Orleans. And of course, everybody does know Adam Cole will be doing double duty at New Orleans, so this guy deserves a raise at TakeOver. We will, of course, have the announcement of the North American Championship next week, which I can't wait to hear the crowd reaction. EC3, of course, will make his debut next week, and um, Ricochet is coming soon. All that and more for the next two weeks, and we only have two weeks left of NXT tapings to go before we get to we get to our next takeover, which is looking to be the strongest takeover ever. And these takeovers just seem to be getting better and better. Two takeovers ago, we had War Games, which was amazing. We had Philadelphia, which was amazing. But this one, we're introducing a new title. We have Black versus Almas. We had the finals of the Dusty Tag Team Classic going up against the winner, the um, the winner of the final of the Dusty Tag Team Classic going up against the Tag Team Champions. And, of course, Ember Moon versus Shayna Baszler. And if they add another match, we'll have to see. And if they do Gargano versus Ciampa in an unsanctioned match, that would be amazing. But we'll have to wait and see. But that is all for your NXT review. We will have... It was a, it was another um, excellent show. NXT never seems to fail to... The, they never fail to deliver quality television. And the main roster, including Road Dumbass Dog... And whoever is the lead on Raw should take the hint on how to run an actual television show. Because NXT by far is and always will be, until further notice, the best show on WWE's platforms from here until the foreseeable future. My name is LaFrance. Find me on twitch.tv slash LaFrance08. And find me on, on Twitter at LaFrance. And I will see you guys Saturday for the next episode, episode 12 of Unscripted, where we will talk about Vince McMahon's thoughts on how he thought the ultimate deletion would do. And was it a success overall? And a couple other stories that I have coming out in the pipe work. We will get all of that and more this coming weekend on for Unscripted. Until then, I am out of here. And you have a wonderful afternoon, evening, and night. And see you guys Saturday.